The opportunity class of the OC placement test was conducted on Thursday the 28th of July. The outcomes are expected in late October this month in 2022, which is just around the corner, with an acceptance rate of 14.8% or about one in every six students that can even make it in based on the number of spots available. It makes it extremely competitive. This means for every student who is successful making it in, there'll be five other students who are not successful. So the majority of students will not be able to make it into an opportunity class. If you are a part of this statistic and you were not successful making it in, what should you do? I will get into that and more in today's video. Let's get into it. At the start of this video, I talked about the acceptance rate being 14.8% for the opportunity class exam. This seems to be quite low, but how was this even calculated? Did I just pull this out of thin air? Definitely not. This was calculated by knowing the number of vacancies available, and for 2023, there were 1,830 spots available. The number of applicants in 2020 were 12,344. That means the number of vacancies divided by the number of applicants being 14.8%. Ideally, it would be great if I got two of the same numbers from the same year. However, they don't tell us the exact number of applicants anymore. They only tell us a broad number. So I just wanted to stick with a more recent number that they did actually publish and publicize with. If you are a part of this 14.8%, great, fantastic. This video would not really be applicable for you and congratulations for your awesome achievement. If you are a part of the 85%-ish who did not make it in, this video will definitely be applicable for you and I think you should stay to the end and feel free to stop a certain pass if you wanted to look into it a little bit more. A bit more context about myself. If you are new to this channel, I'm the founder of Bing's Academy. We do one-on-one -on -one tutoring for students to help them reach their educational goals, whether it's selective, OC, the HACCP exam, or anything in between. Uh, personally, I made it into Penrith High School when I did the exam in year six, going into year seven, and then I transferred into Gurreen High School, going into year 11 after trying out three times. Although the opportunity class exam is something that I did do, I did not make it in. I remember wanting to go to Quakers Hill Public School, which had an opportunity class because it was close to where I lived at the time and my older brother also went there. So it would have been really awesome if I had the ability to go there, but unfortunately, I was just not smart enough and I didn't perform well enough in the exam. I was pretty academic in terms of my own primary school where I put a, a decent job in terms of my reports. I didn't really have any issues being in the top math and English classes, but the standard for OC was just too hard for me at the time. That is why I want to share my thoughts as someone who personally went through this experience and did not make it into OC, but was still able to be quite successful in my own opinion in the future. Getting into a selective school, transferring to an even higher selective school, and now finishing my university degree a couple of years earlier and working full time. For starters, the OC test is not everyone's top goal or priority. Many parents and students treat OC as a bit of a practice run for something larger in mind. I treat the OC test the same way and I view it as a good practice, especially for students who are looking to get into selective school in year seven. With three out of the four exams being the same type of exams in the New South Wales selective exam, when compared with the opportunity class exam, it is such a good practice run. Even if you do not make it in, I hope that students who did the OC exam can use it as a learning opportunity to see where they stand in these three subjects being reading comprehension, mathematical reasoning, and thinking skills at the moment. You can also use it to see which areas you need to work in more and which areas that you're already pretty good in heading into that year six exam for year seven entry. Year seven spots for the selective exam have nearly twice the number of spots available for these selective high schools compared to the number of spots in year four opportunity classes. New South Wales Selective is also nearly twice the acceptance rate, being 27.5%, being one in four students. This means theoretically, it is easier to get into Selective as the odds are more in your favor, but it is still highly competitive. And these results are going to be skewed depending on which school options you are looking at. If it is not Selective and you plan on going to a private school, it may be something like an entrance exam or for a scholarship exam, where that's your bigger goal. Perhaps it is something even smaller like the NAPLAN or the ICAS, where you just give OC a go to sort of see how you are, and then you can focus on something a little bit bigger, even though you did not make it in. On the reverse side of the situation, just because a student has made it into OC, it does not necessarily mean that they will make it into selective. 
This may mean that they have a higher advantage being in an environment that is more academically focused, but it is not guaranteed that they will actually make it in. If OC students do not just study and wing the exam, they will likely not succeed or get into a top selective school. I have not met one parent or student who only wanted to get into an opportunity class and nothing else. Getting to this class is advantageous, but it's definitely not the only option if you want to succeed in the future. A mentality that I want students and parents to think about if you're not successful in making it into an OC is just enough stress. It is totally normal to go through some stages of the grieving process and to feel a bit upset. Although it is not the time to stress out too much, especially if you are kind of prone to being worried and anxious. If you have a larger goal in mind like the selective school, you need to prepare for that rather than feel sorry for yourself and not doing anything. Regret will not help change your situation. Being stressed will not help you change your situation. Moving on quickly from this outcome is crucial if you do not want to feel this certain way again and be in this situation. The positive part of this is that you can also see that even if you didn't make it into a selective class, it may mean that you do not need to leave your school. Let's say that you have some reservations about leaving your friends, your teachers and the school community if you're a student. Now, since you didn't make it in, you don't have to leave at all. Now, this is especially good for some younger students just because they don't really want to leave their friends and the people that they know. I've heard from parents that their kids would deliberately not perform to the standard that they typically do in the opportunity class exam because they secretly do not want to leave their school. They will then try hard for selective, but if you don't try hard for the opportunity class, it is going to make selective a little bit more difficult as you won't have a clear idea of where you stand if the scores that you've gotten for OC is not completely accurate. Regardless, what was done in year four is done in year four. Year five and year six will be different and you should move ahead. The scores that you've done for the opportunity class in year four will not necessarily be the same types of scores that you get in year six. So you can always definitely improve. And just because you didn't make it into OC, you can still make it into another school if that was your goal. You can also use the results from OC, even if the question and format may be different to an extent, to see how you compare to other students. For the reading comprehension, are you going to be in the bottom 50% or were you in the top 10%? If you are in the bottom 50%, it means that you have to improve quite a lot regardless of the goal. It probably means that your foundations are weak and there are many, many other students that perform much better than you. The format for reading between the OC and selective is extremely similar, so it gives us a lot of insight. They're comparable in many respects, so having it as a baseline comparison can be beneficial. If you are in the top 10% in reading, it may indicate that your preparation is in the right direction and what you did was on the right track. It does not mean that you can spend less time studying or no time studying that subject again, but maybe you don't have to spend as much time on that subject if you got in the top 10% compared to another subject where you got a lower result in. This can be applied to any of the subjects for the OC. For this year, you would have received the score out of 300 or 120, but now they just indicate where the student performed compared to other students who sat through the test. And I'll be sure to put an example of what you may expect if you did the OC and you wanted to sort of see what type of result you got. Let's say you went to one tutoring center and focused on an individual subject for a decent or a long period of time and you also had a study plan that you followed in preparation for it, for the OC. If in that subject you performed in the top 10%, it may indicate you did great. You may want to stay with the tutoring center and tweak the study plan to an extent, but overall you know that what you did to prepare for that exam worked out. Although if you're in the bottom 50% of students who sat the test, you may really want to seriously reconsider the tutoring center you attended or the preparation or the study plan that you did leading up to that exam, otherwise you're not going to get a different outcome. If all the practice tests and predictions showed something completely different to what you actually received in a negative way, then that is an immediate red flag. If the practice tests and their feedback aligns with the actual result, granted the student felt like they performed like how they normally do, then you may not be able to blame the tutoring center because in all the practice tests, you're already expected to not perform that well. Just in the actual exam, it's going to be quite rare for you to perform that's going to be a lot different to these practice tests. 
Instead, you can see something if you change something from the study plan or tweak the approach of what the tutoring is if you wanted to change it. Whether it's something like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, if that didn't work out, try group classes. If group classes didn't work, try one-on-one -on -one or small groups and vice versa. This reminds me of the quote, you can't change the result without doing something different. By taking the exact same actions and expecting different results, it doesn't make sense. I'm going to assume that if you did not make it into OC, your performance marks would not have been the greatest, otherwise you would have made it in. So this information is going to be so critical to learn from it so that if you have a bigger goal in mind, you can tweak and adapt your plan. Don't just go through the motions again, you have to radically change what you're doing in terms of preparation or you're going to get the same result and that is not making it in. In summary, not getting into an opportunity class will feel bad. I didn't make it as well when I was younger in year four and I was pretty depressed. I kind of felt like I wasn't as good as my older brother who made it in and that other students who did manage to transfer into an opportunity class, I felt like I was inadequate and I was a bit embarrassed, especially going to tutoring. I believe you should acknowledge the situation and just move on from there, accept it, and just know that it's normal to feel this way, but don't mope around for months and months on end. You really don't have the luxury to do that. If you have a higher goal in mind like the selective or if you wanna get a scholarship in a private school, prepare for that instead of moping around. You can think of the positives where now you're staying at your current school, you don't have to leave your friends, you don't have to leave your teachers, and you're kind of used to the school and the environment. You can stay with them for another two years until you have to go to high school. There's no changing that. Everyone who goes into high school, you may see some people you know, but a lot of the people that go to high school will come from different schools and you can't really change that fact. Don't forget that this is also a great opportunity to learn from your OT OC test scores. You can tweak your preparation for the future because if you do the exact same things, you'll get the exact same results. If you like this video, send it to a friend and subscribe if you haven't already. Write down in the comments below if you managed to make it into an opportunity class when you get those results and maybe you'll find some other people. Or if you didn't manage to make it in and you're feeling a little bit down and you just wanna pass on some of your comments or thoughts to someone else who didn't make it in, write that down below. I think we've had some really positive feedback in our previous video for the students who weren't successful for selective school, even for the people who were successful and they wanted to wish other people luck. And I think that's awesome. Well, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.